Next on AM560, The Answer. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios. If you're looking for the latest news, insight into what it means, and the sharpest opinion, there's only one station in Chicago where you can turn, and it's this one. We're AM560, The Answer. You know I love that song. <laughs> I'm waiting. Uh, good morning. Amy Jacobson here, John Anthony, hey. and for Dan Proft. Hey, hey, hey. Well, he goes swinging, hitting a little white ball down the fairway across the pond in Ireland. You know what I get that? Hey, hey, hey. Um, oh, Come Jack on. Brickhouse? Oh, no, what's happening now? Oh. Dwayne. Oh, Dwayne. Hey, uh, hey, hey. I, there, you know, there's a video of me doing that. because. No uh, way. No, there is. Quinn shot it. Remember, Quinn? We <laughs> shot it in the hallway here at the station. Oh, my God. I'll show it the to Roger you. The Roger dance? The Roger. I can do the Roger dance. Oh. So can you do it? No. No, you do this, this, and up. then no. you jump. No? no. no? Okay. No, no. You know, I know my talent. Uh, you're bringing me, <laughs> bringing me back to the 80s. <laughs> All right. What's next for the shot spotter? Uh-oh. 34 to 14. I'm sorry, 33 to 14 was the vote, which I think is historical that right now, can you remember a time in your life when any mayor in the city of Chicago had only the support of only 14 aldermen? Yeah. Has that ever happened in your town? Ah. Maybe you'll have one or two people go rogue. Yeah. But not that much. And here's Brandon Johnson when it was, you know, because he's going to veto it. Yeah. And he was reminding people that executive branch outweighs the judicial branch. In my case, I get to lead and tell people the truth. Now, if someone wants their mayor to just simply appease, to help ease their anxiety, ease. that's what led us in this mess in the first place. But if you want a mayor that's going to tell you the truth and do everything in your power, my power, to make sure that the people of this city are safe, then you have the right person. And really, what is Shot Spotter? You've spent one hundred million dollars on what essentially is walkie talkies on a stick. Oh my God! And then soon after that, somebody made a T-shirt with a walkie talkie no on a stick. No way! And that exploded. No, I'm yeah. kidding. No, not too <laughs> oh, soon. Um, with more on this, let's welcome back to the program. Alderman Raymond Lopez. Good morning, Alderman. How are you? Good morning, John. Good morning, Amy. And good morning to all of your listeners. Yeah, so what are you, uh, walkie-talkie on a stick, huh? Well, I think you're talking about dances, and I think when the mayor was making those comments, he was envisioning himself doing the Carlton dance oh, uh, in his head um, to, uh, to, the, to the beat, uh, because he clearly is not the mayor who lives in the world of truth. But what, I mean, why is he digging in his heels on this? Is it because it was a campaign promise that he made? You know, yes, it is a campaign promise, but there has to be something more to it. Because any anybody who's run for office knows that you say things, you get there, and you have to assess what you what you believed versus what the reality is. And this is one of those rare instances where you can say one thing about the technology – but then you learn the facts. You learn that it saves lives. You learn that it brings police to a crime scene quicker. You learn all of these things, and then you say, you know what, hey, maybe we should tweak it, but we don't have to end it. But he is refusing to do that because not only him, but so many of the far extreme hyper-progressive left uh, that he's catering to that mostly come out of the, the Chicago Teachers Union want this technology gone. They want less criminal accountability in the city of Chicago and the county of Cook, and anything that gets in their in their way of achieving that goal is the enemy. Well, tell us how Shot Spotter has saved lives, or at so least since January of yeah. 2023. We have seen 1,976 lives saved because the technology sent police and first responders to a shooting location when no 911 call was made. So let's just think about that for a minute. That's nearly 2,000 people who were helped at the worst moment in their life because nobody called the police, and the mayor is saying that this is ineffective technology. I'd like to see him go tell their families that their loved ones aren't worth the effort to keep this technology in the city of Chicago, that it was a mistake to keep them alive. And I want to see him show up to the first funeral on the west side or the south side or any neighborhood in the city of Chicago, for that matter, when someone dies because there was no 911 call and nobody came and helped the person starting Monday. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, the homicide rate is going to go up. There's no mm-hmm. doubt about that. And they're starting to take them down, <clears throat> excuse me, on Monday. Isn't that correct? Yep. Everything goes down <sighs> Monday. The mayor is clearly not only unaware of what the technology does, what the benefits are, and what 70%, 70% of Chicago wants, but he also doesn't understand government. Once again, we have seen where the, the legislative branch, the city council, has flexed its muscle, made its will known, and he is choosing to ignore this. We issued an order to him to maintain this in wards that wanted to keep it. He said we don't have the authority. We issued a law saying that we are going to give new authority for the superintendent to maintain contracts. That doesn't apply to him. Wow. You know, at what point are we going to have a conversation about this? egomaniac who thinks that he's above the law. That's not how this works. We are not the fake news. We are the legislative branch that he has to and, and, that he has to listen to. Wow. You know, I, I just got one question um, about about shot Spotter. How sensitive is that the ability to pick up stuff? Because and I, I'm, 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 I may be going down a rabbit hole here, but um, can it pick up Let's say somebody's in their house having a conversation. Is it that sensitive of, of technology? Or, or could it go to that point where a shot spotter can actually listen in on somebody's having a conversation in their kitchen? The technology cannot hear what's going on in your house. Okay. Oh. And to be fair and to be honest, even when gunshots happen inside buildings, that's usually when we have some of the issues with the detection technology because four walls make for a very difficult triangulation. It works best when the shootings are out in the open. Okay. But there's no technology out there that's eavesdropping on you. So all of the ACLU's concerns about too many cameras and things of that nature don't apply to this technology. Well, we do have one. It's the cell phone, but that's, a, that's, that's neither here nor there. But I, I got a question about, because I, I, I saw, I believe it was on, I was on wirepoints.org, uh, Ted Dabrowski's outfit. Um mm-hmm. Has Chicago learned the lessons from Detroit? You know, I remember when, when I was in the General Assembly and Detroit filed for bankruptcy, uh, the pensions went pennies on the dollar, and now Detroit just leapfrogged Chicago, as, and now Chicago has the worst credit raising among any major city. Are they, are they trying to take any lessons from what happened to Detroit? Because with that said, Chicago's in a lot of trouble. Are the leaders listening? I don't believe so. I believe that they have no sense of history. They have no sense of where they are in this moment. And they have no idea what is going on down the road for the future. And you see that more and more, not just with what we're talking about here, but even with this financial crisis that we're at. You are running a nearly $17 billion operation that is $60 billion in debt on a $10 billion revenue stream. That doesn't add up in any universe. And the mayor and his team and his allies want to keep that operation going, most of which was fueled by federal COVID dollars, which expired in about a year and a half. Right. And they want to shift the financial burden for all those cushy new jobs that they've created for all their crazy friends onto the taxpayers as the federal money dries up. All right. Well, waking up this morning, learning that uh, local leaders revealed uh, a proposed plan, it's called the One System Initiative, don't you love titles, mm-hmm. to programs where they're going to merge homeless and migrant shelters together. Do you oh, know boy. anything about this? You know, everyone laughed when uh, yeah. President Trump was asked, what's his plan? And he said, well, I have a concept of a plan, and I'll reveal the concepts of my plan later when he was debating Kamala Harris. Right. That's pretty, mu- that's pretty much where Brendan Johnson is with homelessness and the transition of the migrant situation to the homeless situation. But what I can tell you is that what you're seeing is the culmination of years of effort by the not-for-profit complex that exists within the city of Chicago to now having full control over a a multi-million dollar operation to address homelessness with no incentivizing ending homelessness, but just keeping the people in a state where they are constantly dependent in the city of Chicago. So we have 48,000 migrants here in Chicago and about 68,000, right? Right, that we know of, and then 68,000 homeless, correct? Correct. 
And then they just so, okay. Go on. Sorry. We have seen people. We have seen we have seen people that have transitioned out from more reliable housing than uh, than the shelters that uh, for the uh, migrants that have come here. Um, not necessarily being able to pay their rent, but they're in an apartment. They're in some sort of housing, not a shelter. And the mayor's vision is to have uh, a collection of not for profits continue and build upon what they put in place in many of these temporary shelters and, and networks and basically just give the not-for-profits all the money to handle. Basically, what he's doing is outsourcing yep. mm-hmm. this issue away from the city so that you're taking it out of the hands of union jobs, taking it out of the hands of city control, out of the hands of uh, legislative oversight, and turning it over to all of your not-for-profit friendlies who have now become your new patronage centers to basically run the show for homelessness and hopes that it's going to end. And we've seen where, just like with the anti-violence, when you don't have metrics that incentivize live outcomes and results, all you get is an increased and expanded welfare state that actually doesn't lift anyone out of poverty, lift anyone out of homelessness, but just keeps them in a constant state of need. Hey, Alderman, I, this 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 uh, mayor just doesn't like police officers, right? Um, what I I saw the story about the the Illinois National Guard, the former building, uh, this that was sold by the state for a dollar, and the gov the the, the mayor wants to uh, trans uh, shift it to from a being a police depart- um uh, precinct to a storage maintenance and operation of police vehicles. Uh, do you guys as aldermen have a say in that? And what's the plan to? Uh, make it a, a police uh, precinct instead of just the storage. Well, I want I have to commend my colleagues Alderman Quinn and Alderman Tabaris who really have led the charge on this in the eighth district on the southwest side. The eighth district is geographically larger than almost every city in Illinois except for Aurora and Chicago. To wow. put things in perspective, wow. um, over a quarter of a million people live in the eighth district, wow. and it has less officers per capita than neighboring districts like the 7th District, which is in Englewood, um, we want to cut it in half. We want to make sure that we can better serve and keep people protected because the may, this district historically has under-policed the community uh, and gone for, as it transitions from a retirement sleepy district to one that's more active, as we've seen with a lot of uh, caravans, street takeovers, and things of that nature. We need to reassess and make some changes. Mm. The governor... Is willing to sell us, wrote a bill, going to sell the building to the city of Chicago. The local aldermen, the local community wanted, they voted on it in a referendum. 12,000 people, if I'm not mistaken, said, yes, do this. But here again, the mayor knows best, right? <laughs> the mayor thinks that he does not have to listen to what people want, that he doesn't understand how to keep people safe, and he's not being uh, truthful with his intentions. You are 100% correct. He will do nothing that helps the police that increases the police presence or makes him have to hire more police to protect people. And this is a very blatant example of that. We have the authority to purchase the building, to uh, move forward as a city council, but he will ultimately direct his superintendent and the resources where he wants, even in direct violation of what we say. We see it time and time again. And it's going to set him up for yet another battle with the city council uh, over public safety. And that is not a good look for a mayor who thinks he's going to be around for 28 years. Oh, I know. And he even said that, too. Remember that? That yeah. was a press conference a few weeks ago. He's like, well, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be here to 2027 and beyond. No, nah, he's a one-termer. Oh, you, oh, you think? It, it depends. If, if Alderman Ray Lopez runs, you know, he could be easily be a one-termer. Or Alderman <laughs> Beal or somebody. I mean, anybody. Yeah. We need yeah. somebody to run against him. All right, Alderman Lopez, we're going to have to leave it there for today. Thank you so much for joining us. We always appreciate it. Guys, you have a great weekend, and stay safe to you and your listeners. Thank right. you. I'm going to go put some a Guadalupe candle next had, to my shot spotter near my house. I should have invited him to the boat cruise. Well, I'll, Alderman, come on. I, I'll let you too, Chad. Yeah. Um, and Alderman Lopez of the 15th Ward joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Connect with Dan and Amy on the AM560 The Answer mobile app. Just text the word APP to 64636 to download the app today. This is Seth Liebson for townhall.com. Israel has carried off a mission impossible, the technological and psychological equivalent of its raid on Entebbe and Uganda in 1976. 
There, Israel rescued over 100 hostages, losing only one Israeli soldier, Yonatan Netanyahu, the brother of Bibi. Of course, the UN Secretary General condemned Israel then, for the sad story of this world is too many simply do not want Israel to defend itself, rescue its hostages, or even exist at all. We see that in the condemnations of Israel's communications devices attack on Hezbollah in Lebanon today, and we see it from people who never have criticized the A-team of terrorism, Hezbollah, a group that takes credit for thousands of deaths, including hundreds of Americans. These jihadists are responsible for tremendous violence and mayhem. Taking them on and out is what those with morally guided dictionaries should call justice. What Israel is accomplishing should be praised with amazement at its ingenuity. May it be a clear step toward a decisive victory for us and our ally. Attention maintenance coordinators. Fans are a vital part of your business